What is going on guys? Welcome back to a brand new video. For the new viewers, my name is Sloby. And today, we are at Furlough Thursday. at Furlough Headquarters. Oh, I don't know why I enjoy saying that. It's kind of funny. So today we're going to summarize, summarize, summarization, the snowmobiles. Get them ready. We're, we're going to fog them. I found out that if you looked in the owner manual, there was a series of buttons you could press and they'd fog on their own. So I'm going to do it on both my Renegade and my dad's Renegade. Never done it before, so I'm going to read you what the book says. I'll take a slow video of what the book says so you have that. And then we'll do it together and hopefully it all works out now i'm going to do mine first because the book is for mine and i can only assume which you know what happens when you assume and do the same thing for my dad's his is a 15 mine is a 20 same sled e-tech renegade so yeah let's do it if you guys this video is for you snowmobilers. I know it's late, but I didn't just find out about this process until probably a couple days ago. And I said, I want to do it. You know, I want to do the right thing. So my sled runs right over to summer. So my sled runs right in the winter time. The engine gets properly oiled, fogged. So let's do it. Crush that like button, subscribe, hit the bell notification so you know when I'm uploading new videos. Let me know you did all that. Let me know what you think of this video in the comments below. So let's do it. Like other engines, the ETOC has to be properly lubricated at storage for internal parts protection. The ETOC system offers a built-in engine storage lubrication function summarization that can be initiated by the operator. To engage procedure, do the following. Number one, place the vehicle in a well-ventilated area. Pretty well ventilated, guys. Number two. Number two. Start the engine and let it run at idle speed until it reaches its operating temperature. Watch the cool temperature on the display or verify the rear heat exchanger becomes warm. Number three. Push the set S button to select odometer mode. Note, the storage mode does not function in other modes, trip A, trip B, and our trip. Repeatedly, number four, repeatedly, re, number four, repeatedly, <laughs> number four, repeatedly depress the high-low beam switch rapidly. Then while doing this, press and hold the set button until push S appears on the display. Number five, release all buttons when gauge. Number five, release all buttons when gauge displays push S appears. Stay here. Number six, again press and hold the S set S button for two to three seconds. Note, the gauge will display oil when the storage procedure is initiated. Number seven, when gauge displays oil, release button and wait for the lubrication function to end. Do not touch anything during engine lubrication cycle. The engine lubrication function takes approximately one minute. During this time, the engine RPM will increase slightly to approximately 1600 RPMs in the oil pump will oil flood the engine. At the, engine. at the end of the engine lubrication procedure, the ECM will turn the engine off. Remove the tether cap. Remove the tether cord cap from the engine cutoff switch. Notice, do not start the engine during storage period. So one of the things I like to do, and you don't have to when you flood it, is start it once a month or so over the summer. I tend to do it every time I come up, I'll start the sled, so I won't have to this year. It'll, when we move them to the bottom of the barn, we'll start them and they'll be unsummarized. 
I don't like that term. Now that I was outside in the bright, it's so dark in here. Hopefully you guys can see good. All right, first things first, we're gonna turn it on. This brings back such good memories. There's the S button right there. So I think she's ready. I press the S button. And as it appears, I put it in odometer mode. To be honest with you guys, I have no idea what odometer mode even means. I got it on the miles I put on it. It says, the storage mode does not function in other modes, trip A, trip B, and our trip. So, I'm in none of them. So now, repeatedly press, repeatedly de depress the high-low beam switch rapidly, then while doing this, press and hold the set button until push S appears on the display. This might be tricky to do on camera, guys. See, it switched the, the... I have no idea what I'm doing here. It said press and it said press and hold set button. Holy crap. You had the, once it said press and hold set button, you had to hit the S. I tried to get it on camera. It's hard to do two handed or yeah, I only have two hands is what I was trying to say. I just held it and then it revved up real high. Smoke started coming out pretty good. And it says about a minute, but that really, it took probably about 30 seconds. So if that, it revved up to about 2000 RPMs and then you shut off on its own. So we're gonna try to do the same thing with Jimbo's sled. 
the good thing here is that I always say, you guys are getting real time stuff for me. I'm not pretending to know what I'm doing and all that good stuff. I know what I know and I learn and hopefully you guys learn with me. It sounds kind of weird to say, but now we're going to do it with my dad's sled. Ready, so I'm going to try to do this one handed so you guys can get a good look at what I'm doing. We're going to repeatedly press the I beam and the S button at the same time. So here it goes nothing. Well guys, I needed both hands to do that. It's kind of tricky. I mean, it's easy, but it's kind of tricky. So sometimes when you press the S button, it switches it to a different setting. Like on his, it has play and stop. I don't even know what that means. If somebody wants to comment below, when I was pressing his, it said play, stop, uh, play, stop, and recreation. So there must be three levels to his engine. I don't know. Mine didn't do that. Um, but sometimes when you press that button, it switches to that and you have to press and you have to keep it on the odometer for it to work. So once you press it and the odometer doesn't move, then you can click real fast and it will just either tell you oil or it'll say press and hold S for oil. And then you can stop clicking the high beam and take your finger off the S button. But then once you take your finger off the S button, press and hold it until the snowmobile shuts off. You'll see it go start to climb the rpms and then it will just come down to nothing and start smoking a little bit and i just die or shut off i don't want to call it die so i'm gonna to try to give you a good shot of the handbook so you could see exactly what i'm reading from Just want to give you a little time to pause and then keep going. So then we're going to go to the next page, the very top. The guide says push S, but it literally says press and hold for oil injection. And that's when you let off the S and then press it again. And then finally the last page. So guys, I'm going to leave you with this. If I can do it, you can do it. I'm telling you that right now. Just take your time. Watch this video. If you got your handbook, read your handbook. Now I did the same exact thing for the 2015 Renegade XRS as the 2020 Renegade XRS. 
His is 800, mine's 850. Um, same press the press the high beam button as fast as you can while you press the S and then it will beep and say press and hold for oil injection you let off the you stop doing the high beam let off the S button and reapply the S button and hold it and then it will say oil and then it'll just start to climb RPMs and then it'll get up to about both of them got up to about 2000 and then came back down and smoked ourselves out or fog they say and shut off take the keys off hit the kill switches and then we're gonna cover them back up i've literally been up here probably about 20 minutes if that and it was more getting the cameras ready so let's get these covered back oh i wanted to show you guys for you new viewers this is how we store ours we got a beam across the top and then we bought some ratchet straps and put some eye hooks. Let's get a closer look at the eye hooks. And then this is just keeping that beam from bowing. Just hook them up to the bumper and then ratchet them up. And you get them about, you don't have to ratchet them up very high, just get them off the floor just a bit. And that's how we like to do it and then we cover them up and then thanksgiving i'll bring them down to the bottom of the barn year after year guys best part august comes and you start thinking about ripping september comes and then you start to talk about it a little bit with your buddies october comes and you start coming up to the ride four wheelers a little bit and before you know it you're bringing the sleds down to the bottom of the barn and then december comes and you're whining there's no snow January comes and you never know if you're gonna get a nor'easter or Alberta clipper and then finally we get some you get that first rip in and Unfortunately this year. We only did 500 miles, but It's better than no miles guys But I just wanted to thank you guys all so I wanted to thank you all for so much I'm talking like a fool now I just wanted to thank you guys for all your support. It means a lot to me We're getting there we're on the road to a thousand. We're at like 627 as of this video. This is furlough Thursday. It's a bluebird day out there. See? It's gorgeous out. We've been fishing. We've been four wheeling. Dad went home. Now some of the guys are coming up tonight. And who knows what tomorrow will bring. I'm running out of space on my SD cards because I've recorded like four or five videos this week. So I'm gonna have to start picking and choosing. So thank you so much for all your support. Share this with your friends, your frenemies, your enemies, your family, your coworkers, your coworkers, coworkers, anybody you could think of. I appreciate all your support. Love you guys. Peace out. And we will see you next time.